Did you have one of these? These synthesizers contain possibly the simplest FM chip Yamaha has ever produced, the 2 operator OPLL, which is the lower cost version of the OPL2 chip found in the Sound Blaster and the Adlib. Yeah, trust me, it's in there. The OPL2 is itself an OEM derivative of the company's Pro 6 operator chip found in the DX7. Ain't it beautiful? I won't hopefully bore you with too much nerdy details about how we intensely studied most of Yamaha FM chips over a period of years. But for the OPLL specifically, I created this little board which allowed me to feed commands directly to the chip through USB. And I also did this other board specifically for the Konami VRC7 footprint. But recently I've also been working on a totally unrelated hardware synth concept, which is to drive the Famicom cartridge bus with an ARM CPU and use the same C++ code I use for chip synth on both hardware and software, in order to drive Japanese exclusive games with expanded audio. This led to that and I ended up creating my own cartridges, one of which uses the OPLL. So now when I want to test my emulator, I just swap cartridges around and I don't have to mess with flaky interfaces or headers anymore. Hi! Okay, so decided to use um, this other prototype instead of the one I showed in video because this one has a straight audio output. It doesn't uh, filter the cartridges at all. Um, so this will help us have a better comparison of the spectrum. Um, I've already set up the software. Let's just um, put this volume down. So on the left, we have just the emulation. On the right, we now have the cartridge. So let's have them be the same level of roughly. Yeah. So what you're hearing now, that's a bit too loud. Well, they shouldn't match. So now the software controls, uh, well, the, the whole UI and, and the logic behind it is designed in such a way that uh, it controls, there's a really clear separation between uh, the emulation core and the software itself. So at one point in the chain, I can just go and, and forward the events straight to the cartridge um, or the external device or whatever. At the same time, I'm feeding my emu. So that's been used uh, a lot when we were designing and developing this. The OPL2 has few differences with the OPLL. The OPL2 has two extra waveforms, one other algorithm, and the other main difference is the OPL2 can have one custom sound per voice whereas the OPLL can only have one custom sound for the whole chip. And it's up to the user to decide whether or not all the voices use the custom sound or whatever the internal ROM sounds are. Like violin, guitar, clarinet, oboe, trumpet, and so forth and so forth. And all of the variants have different sets of those different sounds. It doesn't make any difference for Porta FM that much because usually we play polyphonically one sound because the thing is not multi timbral. The OPL2 mixes all its voices at once and outputs the whole thing at 49 kilohertz, whereas the OPLL runs at 3.75 megahertz divided by 4 and then divided by 18 slots, which roughly makes. 49, the same 49 kilohertz, but it outputs one channel after the other in a time multiplexed manner. That does kind of an horrible, atrocious carrier frequency at around 49 kilohertz. So that puts our Nyquist at around 24 ish. I'm going to create a simple sound here without all that crap. and put it way high. Malt to the max, and now we're starting to have fun. So it falls back exactly the same space. Whether or not you think it makes a difference, I don't care. We want to emulate the thing exactly like hardware as much as possible. Why would you want to emulate aliasing on this baby? See, kind of weird tones it creates. Well, if you don't 
emulate you know, the sample rate exactly like hardware, it's not gonna behave the same way. Nice. Sorry for your ears, by the way. The hi hat. Oh, let's play with the settings a bit. Um, you might know that the hi hat and the snare drum share the same pitch in the chip, the same uh, with the tom and the cymbal. The bass drum has its own channel, so let's mess with the snare drum. See, all the peaks are again matching. Some interesting things to look at. I have a cheat sheet here. Um, seashore. Um, basically, the idea is to show the um, what what are the edge cases that we need to emulate and what's what's a, a dead giveaway that something is badly emulated or not is is look for edge cases so i think we need to look at seashore and what we need to see is the attack steps Pretty cool. So now I've got the OPLX inside. Just gonna go to here and try to trick you guys. Wait, it's not the same thing. That's because I didn't put the right variant. They need to match. So now, yeah, the built in sounds are gonna be the same thing. Even of the side effects when you dynamically change things, sometimes you get odd behavior. Try the OPLLP to hit the thing again, go to settings, layer one. Yeah, thing is, OPLLP. Oh, wow. Try something else. Uh, tremolo steps. Let's do it without a tremolo. Let's put it on. Very, very clicky. <laughs> Let's try, let's try, telephone ring. Who doesn't want to make a beat with this? Lead eight, lead eight, where's that? Lead eight, synth lead eight. So that's to prove the, the delay between the, yeah. See all the oops, they're disappearing, then timing is exact. There you go. Uh, was there any other tests? DK Fuzz it around. We're only doing boring things now. See, not all random combinations are really interesting, especially with amp perk on and mold to the max and chaos level. Are. 
One last thing I want to show you is how you can hook up the garage point directly into this as well. And it layer one close perf. Nope, we want six voices because that's what the chip can do. Interestingly, volume is not the same, filtering is not the same. You have a low pass and a high pass filter this time.